In the 19th century, Frederick Edwin Church became the most famous artist in the United States, best known for his adventurous travels and bold paintings of the natural world. Born in Hartford, Connecticut in 1826, the gifted Frederick Church decided at a young age that he wanted to become an artist. The art collector Daniel Wadsworth persuaded the landscape painter Thomas Cole to accept Church as his pupil. In 1844, 18-year-old Frederick went to study with Cole in Catskill, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River, and accompanied him on sketching excursions in the nearby Catskill Mountains. Cole noted that Church had the finest eye for drawing in the world. In 1848, at age 22, Church became the youngest artist to be elected to the National Academy of Design. Frederick Church established a studio in New York City and quickly gained a reputation for expansive New England views that synthesized intensive plein air studies into vivid compositions. In 1857, Church rose to national and international prominence with his seven-foot-wide panoramic painting, Niagara which stunned spectators throughout the country and in Great Britain. One critic famously wrote, this is Niagara with the roar left out. By this time, Church had also become enraptured with the work of the renowned naturalist and explorer, Alexander von Humboldt. Humboldt implored artists to travel and capture the majesty of the natural world, particularly in South America. In 1853, Church made the first of two expeditions following in Humboldt's footsteps through the Andean region. His resulting 1859 masterpiece, The Heart of the Andes, is a huge 10-foot painting that he exhibited in dramatic fashion. It was the blockbuster art event of the decade and stunned audiences in New York City and around the country. His friend, Mark Twain, wrote, you will never get tired of looking at the picture. And a New York paper wrote, a new picture by Mr. Church is as considerable an event in the world of art as a new novel by Victor Hugo or a new poem by Tennyson would be in the literary world. It was during the exhibition of The Heart of the Andes that Frederick met Isabel Carnes. They married in 1860 and purchased a hillside farm in Hudson, New York, directly across the Hudson River from the home of his late teacher, Thomas Cole. This property formed the seed of his greatest artistic endeavor, Olana. Church's artistic appetite for the natural world brought him to the North Atlantic between Labrador and Newfoundland to sketch icebergs. 1865, Frederick and Isabel traveled to Jamaica, which led to some of Church's most vivid oil studies of botanical growth and tropical light. In 1867, Church and his family embarked on an old world painting pilgrimage to the Alps, Rome, Athens, and the Eastern Mediterranean, including Damascus, Jerusalem, and Petra. When Church returned from his voyage, another visionary series of paintings emerged, and his artistic work began to extend beyond the canvas to the design of Olana's 250-acre landscape. During this period, Church also accepted the role of Parks Commissioner in New York City's Central Park and became a founding trustee of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Church also helped to establish a campaign to create a public park along the American and Canadian borders of Niagara Falls, an iconic landscape challenged by increased 19th century industrialization. With Frederick Law Olmsted, Calvert Vox, and others, the artist Frederick Church advocated for the first state park in New York, the Niagara Reservation, a forerunner to the national parks movement. Frederick Church's Olana, an artist's home and studio, an experiential and environmental work of art, a 250-acre earthwork, a New York State historic site and public park, a regional economic engine, a national historic landmark, a viewing platform toward the American sublime, a mega artifact, a national preservation of victory, the most intact historic artist's environment in the United States. Olana inspires, 
It immerses the visitor in a great 19th century American artist's vision that lives today as a compelling creative laboratory. Frederick Church envisioned Olana as a 250-acre environment, masterfully combining architectural, agricultural, park, and wilderness elements into a single artistic composition. Church wrote, I can make more and better landscapes in this way than by tampering with canvas and paint in the studio. From Olana, one can see four states, and Church designed this work of environmental art around its near and distant views, now considered Olana's integral viewshed. Olana is an exalted hill of art. With its vast collections and protected views, Olana has stood the test of time and today thrives as a public work of American landscape art. Yet, it was all nearly lost. After Isabel and Frederick's deaths, Olana passed to their son, Louis, and his wife, Sally. They cherished and preserved Olana for more than half of the 20th century, but Louis died in 1943 and Sally in 1964, at which time Olana faced an uncertain future. Frederick Church was largely forgotten and the Hudson River School largely unappreciated. A place like Olana was no longer valued, in this period when iconic landmarks such as New York's Pennsylvania Station and the famed Catskill Mountain House were destroyed, Olana's collections were tagged for auction. This masterwork of American landscape art was to be sold and dispersed. David Huntington, the activist art historian, led the battle to save Olana from destruction in the mid-1960s, forcing the reappraisal of the American landscape tradition in art and culture. He identified Olana as the monument of Emerson's, Thoreau's, and Whitman's America, and inspired a Life Magazine illustrated feature that brought national attention to this pending disaster with an article titled, An Imperiled American Treasure. Saving Olana was a landmark public and private effort, engaging local citizens and national figures, including Jackie Kennedy and Governor Nelson Rockefeller, who pressed legislation to preserve Olana as a New York State historic site in 1966. From this miraculous preservation victory, the Olana Partnership emerged as a committed nonprofit steward that champions and interprets Olana as a national landmark of American landscape and environmental thinking. Our precedent-setting advocacy to protect Olana's viewshed yielded dramatic results for the Hudson Valley and the country as a whole. In the 1970s, a successful campaign prevented the construction of a nuclear plant on the river below Olana, enlisting art and cultural historians and curators nationwide to establish aesthetic impact as a measurable criterion in the federal environmental review process. In the late 1990s, joining with scenic Hudson and the grassroots Friends of Hudson, the Olana Partnership used these tools to stop the construction of a massive coal-fired cement plant on a prominent ridge just east of Olana. As it evolved from one staff member to a talented professional team with an engaged board of trustees, the Olana Partnership championed the comprehensive restoration of Olana and the understanding of it as a holistic work of art, an artist-designed environment in which Church's creation of the landscape with the farm complex at its heart is fundamental to understanding his legacy as a painter and national cultural figure. The painstaking restoration of Olana's main house, with its astonishing interiors and vast collections, came first as part of the 2002 comprehensive plan completed with New York State Parks and its Bureau of Historic Sites. The joint 2015 Olana Strategic Landscape Design Plan extended a compelling vision for transforming the visitor experience at Olana. This award-winning plan is the foundational document for the $20 million public-private capital development effort now underway at Olana. At the same time, the Olana Partnership established the annual Frederick Church Awards to recognize individuals and organizations who make extraordinary contributions to American art and culture. Past recipients include artists Martin Purrier and Stephen Hannock, landscape architect Lori Olin, collectors and art visionaries Patricia Phelps de Cisneros and Alice Walton, curators and art world leaders Linda Ferber, Betsy Brune, Frank Kelly, John Wilmerding, and Maury Heckscher. Parks leaders Rose Harvey and Lucy rockefeller Waletsky, and Olana's champions Jazz Johnson, Byrne and Susan Oberwager, and Kay Toll, and many others. The physical award is inspired by Cleopatra's Needle, 
Frederick Church played a role in citing this ancient Egyptian obelisk near New York's Metropolitan Museum, joining art and landscape. A small replica was given to Frederick Church for his involvement, and it survives today in Church's painting studio at Olana. In interpreting Olana as a holistic work of American landscape art, the Olana Partnership seeks to make connections between the 19th century and our world today. Our annual special exhibitions in the main house and outdoors engage contemporary artists in examining the nexus between aesthetic and environmental thinking, extending Church's legacy of Olana operating as a creative site at the forefront of our national culture. The work of artists Maya Lin, Martin Purrier, and Teresita Fernandez, among many others, has been featured in past years. Following River Crossings, the groundbreaking 2015 joint exhibition with the neighboring Thomas Cole National Historic Site, Olana will again join forces with the Cole Site and the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art to present cross-pollination in 2021. In addition to historic works by Martin Johnson Heed, Frederick Church, and Thomas Cole, and their daughters Downey Church and Emily Cole, the work of contemporary artists will be included. Heed's famed series, The Gems of Brazil, will anchor the exhibition, which positions 19th century artists in a call and response with 21st century American artists, whose works engage current issues related to biodiversity, habitat protection, and environmental sustainability. At Olana, works by the artists Nick Cave, Jeffrey Gibson, Portia Munson, and Vic Muniz will be featured, as well as a site-specific landscape installation by Gene Shin.